things. And the first of them is that human beings, we have a tendency to have reassurance. We want to we wanna be sure about something. We don't like risks. We want to make sure that we're protected in the future. You know, if you're, for example, making a move, you want to ask a hundred questions before you make the move. If you're considering a job, you ask a lot before you consider a job, things like that, right? Or if you're investing your money, then you consider a lot of factors before you, you, know, you invest your money. Uh, especially when it comes to our children, we're, we're going to put our kids in a school. We do a lot of investigating before we put our children in a school. But at the end of the day, the reality is that Allah Azza wa did not give us assurances in this life of the, fu of the future in this life at all. We have to do the best we can. And at the end of the day, every step we take is an act of tawakkul in Allah. It is an act of reliance in Allah. Because you can have the best plan in the world and things will not work out anywhere near what you thought. And you can have no plan at all and everything will get straightened out. That can happen and it certainly does happen. So you have many instances in the Quran, in the prophetic narrative as well, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where things are not, they don't look like they're gonna work out at all. Like Musa alayhi salam being thrown in a basket. That doesn't look like much of a plan. But that is actually the means by which an empire is destroyed. You know, the, the, the empire of Fir'aun and the oppression of Fir'aun against countless people came to an end because a baby was thrown in a basket. So Allah has His own way of making things work out. On the negative side also, there are people, for example, people ask all the time, people are worried about their kids. And I know there are some young people in the audience, but and I'm going to try to balance this conversation between parents and, and the youth, inshaAllah ta'ala. Parents are constantly concerned, how do I give my children a proper education? I want to make sure they're good Muslims. I want to make sure that I don't have to worry about their deen, things like that. And you hear enough horror stories and enough lectures to be terrified of this scenario. You know, and then, then there are people you know, oh, I don't want my kids to be like, you know, Zubair Sahab's children. That's really, you know, like, so there's enough of those conversations you have over Eid and, you know, it's, it's great. But the, the thing I want to share with you is on the one hand you have you know, situations where children are raised with the best of character without even a parental figure, like the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Right, he is kidnapped as a child, so there is no father or mother figure really for him to look up to. So one of the lessons that we derive from Surah Yusuf, for instance, especially as parents, is that we cannot underestimate the value of early education. And not just, and I don't mean education as in memorize this surah, learn these du'as, know how to make wudu. That's what we've turned education into. Education for us is informative in nature. It is not transformative, you know. So in the, in the previous talk you heard repeatedly this idea of having our children internalize the deen. And so that's, that's something that we're going to talk about in a little bit, inshallah ta'ala. But that's the first, you know, reality that I wanted to remind myself of. I do not control the guidance of my children. And you do not control the guidance of your children. As a matter of fact, we don't even have any control of the guidance of our own selves. So the fact that you're sitting here, you know, blessing that we're sitting in a gathering of Muslims, trying to learn something about the deen of Allah, but this is not because you had a super righteous upbringing. There are plenty of you sitting in the audience right now that are parents themselves, that have made some pretty big mistakes in your lives. And if you look back, there wasn't like a set formula that ensured that you will receive guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal, that you followed and that therefore you have guidance. It's actually a gift of Allah that all of us have to acknowledge came to us from Allah Azza wa Jal. But regardless of that, we have to make some efforts on our part. Now on the negative, I didn't get to mention on the negative. On the negative, you have the case of Nuh alayhi salam. In some sense, the father of all humanity. But you know what's remarkable about Nuh alayhi salam? Unlike our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is not the father of any of your men. Any of his male children did not live long enough on this earth to see the age they, were, they would become men. Nuh alayhi salam did in fact have a son. And what, an, what a great opportunity. Your father is a prophet. That's pretty awesome. And not just any prophet. min ulil azm min al rusul. Awwaluhum, actually, the first messenger of great resolve. The messengers of elite status, the five of them, he's the first of them, actually. He's the trailblazer blazer in, this, in this legacy. And yet, if you study his legacy, the first thing that hits you and hits you really hard is the fact that he couldn't get through to his wife and he couldn't get through to his son. 
Who is he going to go ask Allah, who, other than Allah, Ya Allah, what can I do to, for my son to listen to me? You know when parents come and ask, what can, I, what, can you give me something that if you just say that, then my son will transform? You, Nuh alayhi salam couldn't get through to who? His own son. You know, Yusuf alayhi salam is awesome and he was a beneficiary of the advice of his father. But wait a second, Yaqub alayhi salam had other kids too. They were not just beneficiaries for a little while, they remained beneficiaries of their father's advice for many, many years. And yet, until the very end of their lives, way down the road, did they, or the entire story, did they actually turn around and make tawbah. So, it's not in our hands. And we have to accept that. We, have to, we like things to be in our control. We like things to go exactly as we want. And so long as you have that, you yourself and I myself haven't internalized one of the most fundamental truths of life on this earth. We are ibad, we are slaves, we have a master, the master is in control, we are not in control. We are not in control. Now that we accept that, then Allah will give us advice on how we can earn His favor. Because guidance from Him is a favor. And you, you have to work hard to earn that favor. And you have to provide your children an opportunity so Allah can favor them as well. You do your best. You, knowing full well, you cannot ensure anything. If our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam turns to his daughter, he turns to his daughter and says, Ya Fatima tu bintu Muhammad ittaqillah fa inni la amliku laki min Allahi shay'an. Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, you need to have your own taqwa of Allah. You need to be cautious and aware of Allah because I will have no authority against Allah with, with, if, when I stand before Allah in your favor. I won't be able to help you. If the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose shafa'a we are all hopeful for on yawm al qiyamah is telling that to his own daughter. His own daughter. And we have to internalize that reality. Now I've taken too much time for that one comment, but I think it was important to set that foundation. Allah says, then after them, khalf came. You, a useless generation, a disappointing generation came. What makes them so disappointing? Listen to this. Allah'u salata. They wasted the prayer. Allah is telling me and you, a nation, a generation has been wasted. They are no good. There's nothing coming from them. And what makes them no good? The first crime, the first tragedy of these people, they wasted the prayer. وَلَمْ يَقُلْ تَرَكُوا السَّلَاةِ فَقَدُوا السَّلَاةِ كَانُوا كُسَالَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ لَمْ يُصَلُّوا لَمْ يَقُلْ هَذَا He did not say they left the prayer. He didn't say they were lazy in the prayer. They didn't say they forgot about the prayer. The language is very precise. He says they wasted the prayer. Now how do you waste something? How do you waste money? You waste money in a number of ways. Or how do you waste an opportunity? You don't take advantage of it. You waste money if you put it somewhere where it doesn't bring you any benefit. You wasted the money. You had something good, you didn't do something good with it. You wasted your time, you could have done something so much better with your time. In other words, there's something there, but you're not using it the right way, that is also wasting it. So Allah is not necessarily talking about people who don't pray. He's not limiting the conversation to people who don't pray. He's talking about people who don't benefit from their prayer. They don't benefit. They wasted it. The prayer is supposed to transform me. It's supposed to transform you. It's supposed to change something in us. You, why is it supposed to change something in us? This is already, this is the remarkable eloquence of the Qur'an. In the previous ayah we learned, people heard the ayat of Ar-Rahman. And when they heard the ayat, what happened to them? What happened? They fell into sajda. Tell me what happens in your salah. You stand and you listen to the ayat of Ar-Rahman. And what are the next phase in salah? What's the next phase in every rak'ah, the final phase? You fall into sajda. In other words, what you physically do, you're supposed to experience emotionally as well. You're supposed to be so overwhelmed by the word of Allah that you just fall and before Allah. It's supposed to actually not only be a mechanical thing, it's supposed to be a natural consequence of experiencing the word of Allah. As a matter of fact, when you recite the ayat, you should want to go into sajda not because you ate too much or because you're tired, but because these ayat are so powerful that you can't even hold yourself up anymore.